Hey guys, and welcome back to Regret It. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, we are being run by a far-right, cowardly British Indian. I'm sure that's how it's being put around the country. Because you see, the reason why I say, you know, the reason why I say cowardly is because, because Boris Johnson is making an absolute fool of this man. Right? Because Rishi Sunak has got a couple of things that he's, that he's, he should have done with Boris Johnson. Either he phones Boris Johnson and says to Boris Johnson, listen, you are going to cop as my representative, okay? So you make that plain to everybody, okay? Or phone him and say to him, listen, you're not going to cop. You are not going. If you go, I'm going to remove the whip from you, okay? Simple as that. Now, that's what he should have really done and showed, and, and showed a real, some real backbone. Because that's what Boris Johnson probably would have done, right? You know, Boris Johnson already he just, he would just come along and he would just he would just remove the whip from whoever from basically whoever he wants, you know, you know whether it's Winston Churchill's son or it's the other guy, the, the soldier guy, right? You know, it doesn't matter. Boris Johnson will just remove the whip from these people, right? So that's what Rishi Sunak should have done to him. But it's you know people like Boris Johnson and Donald Trump, yeah, they always get an easy ride. Always, always get an easy ride because you know in, when you go to America, right? You look at you look at the situation there, right? And the Republicans could have impeached Donald Trump, right? To make sure you know what we don't want you to have, we don't want you to ever run as president again. But no, they backed off, right? And you know, for me, I mean, it's you know, for me, it's it's sort of criminal behaviour what 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 these people are getting up to, especially like the Republicans. Well, but anyway, let's move back over to Britain because that's, that's where we're supposed to be, right? And then you see you've got like um, him putting like um, Corella de Braverman after she was just sacked six days before, right? For basically for basically gross misconduct. Yeah, that's you know you know what she done. Yeah, she's not allowed to do. You're not allowed to send to send government documents yeah onto a private server so so that's what she'd done and you know in any other job that would be gross misconduct and you'd be you'd be out straight out straight out of there immediately right you imagine like you know someone who's stacking shelves right gets done for gross misconduct you think six days later they'd be back stacking shelves no they'd go and they'd get a job in amazon right you know, to go and deliver the parcels instead of stacking them. But, but that's what they'd have to do. They'd have to go and change the door. There's no way they'd get, you know, in, in any other walk in life, any other walk in life, right? Apart from if you're in a family run company, right? And you get sacked by your mum or your dad, right? This is not school where the, where the teacher, where the, where the head teacher just says, well, you know something, yeah? You're suspended for six days, right? No one gets expelled for six days. You're expelled. You start looking for another school. Right? You you know gross misconduct means you start looking for another job. But no, Rishi Sunak, right? Is a, this man's a weak ass motherfucking fool, right? And that's the reason why he brought back you know Corona Braverman and he's allowing Boris Johnson to to walk all over him, right? Because again, right, he is being held down by the far right in the. Um, in, in the in the Tory party, right? Now they you know they sort of like it because you know what, yeah, yeah, he's the you know he's the first um, um, prime minister of colour, right? And for them, it makes them look as if say, well, look at us. He's Asian, and we're all backing him. No, they're just controlling him, right? And he just do as they say, and you know, whatever horrid whatever horrid things they, they they come up with, that's what he has to go with. It's as simple as that. And then you have got that like, Gavin Williams. Oh my. God, he brought back Gavin Williamson, right? And then all of a sudden, this weekend, all this has come out about Gavin Williamson. He's been out there bullying, right? The you know the first female whip that this country's had. He's been out there, right, bullying this woman, right, because he didn't get an invitation to go to the Queen's funeral. <laughs> they say what? Yeah, he didn't get an invitation to go to the Queen's funeral because you know he's he believes because he's an ex cabinet minister and his name is Sir Gavin Williamson. He believes he's got the right. Right, and, you know, the strange thing is right. A lot of the um, the Tories, a lot of the Tory um, MPs, and that think he's a dick. They think he's a dickhead. They think he's an idiot. 
<laughs> you know, he, the, the, the names they've got for him is um, Mr. Bean and Frank Spencer. Those are the two names what they what they call him. You know, but you know, you got to remember, yeah, Gavin Williamson. He was sacked from the Ministry of from. Um, he was the defense minister, and he was defense minister, right? And he got, well, that's, I believe, that's when he told Russians to shut up and go away. Right? I think, yeah, the the, the 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 female whip here yeah, would probably slap the shit out of him anyway. Right? That would be the thing, right? But you know, he didn't tell her to shut up and go. But he did start. He was like swearing at her. Do you know what I mean, he was very, very, he was like really, he was really, really rude in his in his messages. Right? And then he got sacked from education in it because he completely fucked it up like, like, during the um, pandemic he completely did I mean it's not going to be an easy job during the pandemic being an education minister especially when like you know you're in a country where a lot of kids didn't have access to broadband let me just think alright there was Jeremy Corbyn wanted to put free broadband into people's houses especially those people who don't have um, broadband but anyway, right? Yeah, because a lot of kids don't have access to broadband and that. So it's going, it was it was very hard to, to, to be a minister at that time, especially minister of education. Do you know what I mean? But I still think he, he probably could have done better. And that's the reason why he got sacked. Because, right, his boss probably thought, and his boss was what, Teresa? No, Boris Johnson. It must have been Boris Johnson. It was, it was Boris Johnson that sacked him and then made him into, and then, and then gave him a title. Right. Yeah, it must have been Boris Johnson, right? Because it was during the, it was after the pandemic he got um, the because it, it was pandemic he fucked up, it? Yeah, right. So yeah, so so um, yeah, so you know, so he managed to completely ruin education, right? And now he's been made into a minister at least, at least right? He's a minister without a portfolio. So do you know what I mean? So that means you know he hasn't got any department that he can run into the ground just yet. But hopefully, like Rishi Sunak will be like, you know what? But then you know, poor you know, you, you've got to feel sorry for Rishi Sunak not because of the tight clothing and you can see him squeezing up himself, not because of that, right? But because you know he he has got nothing to choose from. I mean, what what has Rishi Sunak seriously? got to choose from there Grant Shapps I mean seriously Dominic Raab I don't even know if Goggles is in there Michael Gove <laughs> I don't even know if he's in there or as a, or his real title the crackhead Michael Gove Mr Cocaine Party himself and also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. And a special thanks here to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go through all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all the messages for definite. And it seems like, you know, all I hear is people talking about, oh, well, you know, you know, well, politicians. You know, every, all other countries are facing, like, the cost of living crisis. And, you know, that is, that, that, that is true. That is true. But when I hear when I hear one of our politicians saying it, I say to them, you know what, shut your mouth. Just shut up. Don't even talk. Right? Don't talk. Keep your big stinking mouth closed because you're a damn idiot. Because we are paying ten pounds for a gallon of fuel. While in America they're paying under four dollars a gallon under four dollars and we're paying ten pounds right so then when these politicians talk about oh well you know cost of living crisis yeah they might have be having a cost of living crisis but it's a lot different to, to ours because you know what if we was if i was paying if i was paying like you know um under four pounds for a liter for, for a gallon of petrol right and, and diesel right then we would be a lot better off wouldn't we because, you know, most of us, our money is being spent on petrol and diesel for us to get to work. You know, because we use our vehicles for work, you know, or we have to use our vehicle to get to work. Right. Because, you know, if you if you live out in a rural setting in this country, yeah, there ain't no transport. It's not like you're in London. In London, yeah, there's transport, you know, you don't have to worry about timings. You don't have to worry about that shit. You just turn up. Right. Bus, bus or tube is going to turn up. Right. Literally a few, you know, if it don't turn up, you know, a minute after you've got into that, into the underground station, you know, it's going to be there within the next few minutes. Trust me, right? Because that's how, that's how, that's how it runs in London. But once you're out in the rural settings and that, yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot harder, right? You go out, you know, even out to places, even out into places like, um, in, in, you know, in Essex and in Kent, 
right? You know, there's a lot less public transport. So people need to use cars and vans. Right? And then you've got, you know, if, if you're if you're like a builder or, you know, you're, you're a plumber or you're a bricklayer or a plasterer, right? and you've got to get across, you've got to go across London, how are you going to do that, right, without driving your van? Because right? you need your van, it's got all your ladders on it. Right? It's got all your buckets, right? And it's got all your shovels and all that type of stuff in it. Right? So you need that. I mean, you can't carry all that type of stuff. I mean, you can't be carrying loads of bags of cement, right, onto a train. Right? So people need... It. So imagine if we was four pounds. Right? Not dollars and pounds. They're never actually the same, right? But imagine if we was four pounds a gallon. How much better off we would be? But right? you know that we might be in a cost of living crisis, but you know what? Our fuel crisis, our, our, our fuel, right, is not killing us every week. And it's saying I guarantee it's the same for for um for gas in your house and electric as well. Guaranteed, it's the same, right? Where where we're paying more than double what these people are paying, right? But our politicians say to us, oh well, everyone's in a cost of living crisis, right? When you move on to fucking Germany. Right, and now in Germany they've got they're just they're, you know in, I think it's it's coming in either January, February, or March. It's coming right. A new ticket right that takes you anywhere in the country, bus, train, tram. Forty nine euros a month. There's people in this country right who some days they have to walk to work because you know what it costs four pound fifty to go to work and four pound fifty to come back on the bus they haven't got that money cost of living they haven't got that money cost of living crisis they haven't got that money so now they have to walk to five or six miles right or i was watching i was watching a, a thing one one young couple right you know they haven't they you know from since they've moved into their flat they haven't had any gas in there because you know they shut off the, the people have shut off the gas supply Right, because the former tenants wasn't paying, wasn't paying, so the people, so so the gas companies have shut off the supply. Right, instead of just putting in like a prepayment meter or whatever, no, they shut off their supply. Right, so now they have to walk, you know, they either have to walk the forty-five minutes to get to the mother-in-law's, right, or if they're lucky on that day, right, because they're a couple. So now it's four pound fifty each there, and then four pound fifty back each. Right, so let's 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 look at this German this this German ticket now, and let's talk about it, and let's think about the fucking cost of living crisis that these people are telling us. Oh, well, everybody's in cost of living crisis, but when you can buy right a ticket right for a month, where you can go anywhere up and down the country for forty nine euros, and there's people in this country right paying over ten grand for a season ticket. Right, to go on the trains, a season ticket, right, so over 10 grand. So, I mean, we have to ask ourselves, yeah, what is the higher number there? Hold on. So, if it's 49, so what, um, 49, 49 euros at um, 12, right, will be, hold on, I'm, go I'm doing, hold on, I'm doing mathematician, yeah, right now, physically in my head, I'm doing mathematician. So, that'd be 588. 588 588 588 for the year to travel anywhere up and down the country and we've got people in this country paying in excess of 10,000 pounds it's over 10,000 pounds you know you're probably looking at 11 12 thousand pounds to travel on trains right and that Right, that season ticket just gets them to the destination where they're going. Right, if they wanted to go somewhere else, right, they can't use that season ticket unless they're going. Unless the somewhere else they're going is where they fucking work. But for us, oh no, 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 no. Cost of living crisis. Everybody's feeling it. Of course, everybody's feeling it. But we're just getting it a lot worse than everybody else. A judge has ordered Donald Trump to have an independent monitor oversee his businesses. So, to make him stop indulging in fraud. And Donald Trump has called the judge a puppet. <laughs> oh dear. The judge has said, yeah, there's ongoing criminal conduct 
within the Trump organization. So an independent monitor needs to go in there to keep an eye on these people because they're too deep. <laughs> You know, the Democrats are up there, because obviously we've got to, tomorrow is the midterms, right? And now, you know, the Democrats, I think, you know, I think well, I, I think they're going down the wrong lines because they're, you know, they're talking about, like, you know, more worldwide issues, you know, climate change and all that type of stuff. While the Republicans, yeah, are focusing on, like, cost of living crisis and they're focusing on um, culture wars, of course, right? And, the, and they're focusing on, I don't know, where is that? And, and they're focusing on immigration, that's what the that is what yeah the Republicans are focused on and the Democrats are not and because you think to yourself well how is it yeah that you've got a man who tried an insurrection right and then you've still got all these people turning up to his rallies I mean there's got to be something wrong with that yeah that someone could try that right go yeah murder police officers right beat other police officers half to death right and you still and there's still people heavily in support of these people i've even seen black people like you know the the, the election was stolen and you just you know I, what i can tell you is this right if you was going to steal an election in america right you'd be a lot better off right stealing the elections for the senate right and congress because you know you could have the president there as a lame duck if you're running both of those two, right? President can't do anything really if you're running both of those two. So you could have them there, right? So I just think, well, don't none of the Republicans, can't they none of the Republicans get, get that through their thick skulls? No, actually, their skulls are probably too thick to, to actually even get their brain cells to even think about that. That, well, wouldn't the Democrats, if they're stealing elections, wouldn't they just steal the Senate and Congress? I mean, that would be the way to go. <laughs> that would be that. That would certainly be the way to go. You know, and then just look. You know, and then just lock up. You know, once, once the others start with their with their insurrection and all that, just lock them up. You know, because you know, because they could have been. You know, if they if they had the if they had the majority in both houses, then they could have impeached Donald Trump quite easily. Right. So, you know, so, and and had him locked up by now as well. Right. So that's what I think. I, I just think, well, maybe maybe they should look and they should look into that and think, well, why didn't these people try and steal right, the Congress and the Senate as well if they're going to steal if they're going to steal the, you know, for just 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 to think, right, for a sitting president to have an election stolen from him, I mean, Putin would Putin would like, Donald, you have this the wrong way around, right? You are supposed to steal election. <laughs> You know, come on, man. Seriously, elections don't get stolen from sitting presidents. Sitting presidents steal elections. I mean, you know, all you have to do is look at Russia. <laughs> Seriously, man, these people, these people, they're unhinged. And then you see, the, you see, when I was talking about like um, the Dem the, no, the Republicans with their um, with with their um, culture wars. Right, Fox News are losing their minds over some students having cats on campus. I don't even know. I don't even know how they've managed to get time on Fox News for this story, because now you're telling me, right? You're gonna have people watching Fox News sat there with a cat or a dog in their lap. All right, or sleeping on their head because you know that's what cats do. Cat, you give a cat half a chance to sleep on your head. Won't sleep on your feet. Sleep on your head. Go, go to the hottest part of your body. And besides that, cats are like you know what? Because you've got to remember about cats and dogs. Here is that dogs have owners and cats have staff. That's how that's how it works. Because your cat, look at your cat right now. That cat thinks it's better than you. Trust me on this. That cat's looking at you and it thinks I'm better than you. Okay, so when so when I'm ready, I'll go to my bowl and make sure there's food in there. That's how cats look at you. Okay, you know they they right. You're there just their staff. You're there to do what what they need you to do for them. That's how cats work. But you're telling me so these people are sat there, right, explaining this story about how these students are snowflakes for having little kitty cats, right, in campus event. What's the story here? There's snowflakes because they've got cats on campus. 
I said, what, don't you like cats? Is, it, is that what it is? Do you not like cats? That, that's, what, that, that's probably what it's got to be. They probably don't like cats. I'm already 20 minutes in on this video. Wow. <sighs> Twitter's losing advertising money book and Elon Musk has put it down to cancel culture and said it's the bloody lefties, right? They're bloody lefties. But you see, as I always say, yeah, that people, you know, people from the right wing, right? They need to, they, they, for some reason, they need to fight these culture wars and they need to be on the same places as the lefties, right? You know, so that they can upset the libs, right? So now, obviously, Elon Musk, he's suffering a little bit because, you know, Twitter's turned into a cesspit. You know, the end, the use of the N word's gone up by over five hundred percent. So obviously, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, that, you know, when you look at that, it's gonna go right across the board. So it'll be Jews, it'll be Muslims, it'll be you know what I mean. So it'll be, it'll be all, all everybody, right? Well, you know, where these people think to themselves that 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 somehow it's free speech or whatever the hell they want to call it. But now a lot of advertisers are pulling out because. You know, people don't want to advertise, and then you've got a lot of you've got a lot of pressure groups here yeah, who will get onto these people advertising on this. Well, why are you advertising on this still? And they'll just bombard them, right? Because you know they might have you know they might have like a thousand people or two thousand people who can just keep sending them messages, um, um, you know, um, emails and text messages. Why are you doing this? And just keep and you know, and that that basically just blocks up. It blocks up their whole, you know, their, their whole um, system. So that's why a lot of these companies, you know, as soon as, you know, they start getting pressure from these pressure groups, they'll pull out. They'll just say, no, 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 no. You know what? Let's, we need to pull out from advertising here. <coughs> it happens, it happens quite a lot. Twitter founder Jack Dorsey has apologised to all Twitter staff saying he loves all of them. And he's gone off with 44 billion. <laughs> He's good, isn't he, Jack Dorsey? He's really good, right? And this man looks more. This man looks a lot like Wurzel Gummidge. For our younger listeners, you have no clue who that is. Kanye West has been stopped from selling White Lives Matter T-shirts because he does not own the trademark. <sighs> Baba Tunde. This man right, has got to be related to Quasi Quateng. Or Kanye West, because he said, "I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here." On the first, he didn't even get into the jungle. He just got to. He got into basically got into Australia and he said, "I'm a celebrity. Get me there. Hell out of here." Right, and at that stage, Aldous just pushed him off the side because he's attached. <laughs> he's attached. But you, you know, you do that you'd probably have a heart attack. You know. Do you know what I mean? He probably, because he was that scared. I mean, this guy was really, he was really scared. I mean, he was, from what I've heard, he was up there for 45 minutes, right? They obviously wouldn't show all that because that would be too long. But he was up there for like 45 minutes. And I mean, this guy was really, really frightened. And you could see the fear within him. Do you know what I mean? But you just think, well, why would you, I mean, yeah, it, you know, it, it looks scary, but you know, all the time, I'm just like, well, I'm attached to a harness, right? Now, I mean, it could be, obviously, you know, the harness could work like, you know, someone might have given you the wrong one with the wrong rope because shit like that's happened, where someone's been given the wrong bungee, right? They've been given a bungee, right, for a, for a, like a um, 400 foot drop, right? But their drop where they're going is only 300 foot. So you see the problem. <laughs> Bunch is a hundred foot too long, right? Which means you're gonna smash into the floor, right? You know, from bun, and that's happened to a few people where they've died like that. So you know, so you obviously you know. But for me, I mean, this is like TV production. Do you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's pretty safe. And you know, because I know those stories, I would make sure and check the rope myself, right? That's it. Right, if I'm doing a, if I'm doing a bungee jump or something like that, I'm always going to check and double check. Say, so listen, how far is that, and how long is this rope, right? Because there's no way, right? That will, pff, seriously, that's some serious shit. And now we've got rugby player Levi Davis has gone missing in Spain. I don't know if you know who he is, but he was on, he was on. I think he was on. Not Britain's Got Talent, celebrity. no, because there's no celebrities got Britain's Got Talent, but it's, he must have been on Celebrity X Factor, I think he was on. I think that's what he was on. But yeah, he's, he's gone missing in Spain, you know, and um, 
from today, yeah, all people who keep who keep birds um, must keep them indoors because you know apparently this bird flu what's coming is 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 supposed to be you know the the foot and mouth of um, bird flus. Basically, it's supposed to be one of the worst that's ever that's ever hit these shores. That's ever hit anywhere in the world. It's supposed to be one of the worst. So um, everyone who's got one needs to needs to keep keep birds indoors from now. Which obviously turkey farmers and chicken farmers, that's like, you know, they don't really want to. They don't want not want wouldn't want to lose all of their um, stock because that's what could happen. You know, if one of, if one of your birds interacts with a wild bird and cat and catches and gets this, then it's gonna um, it will just infect your whole their whole flock. And you know the need for food banks, right? Is far outstripping the amount of food banks that we've got in this country. The country needs much more food banks, right? And you know you have to just look at the Tory MPs, yeah. You know who are who are happy for the people of the country to eat gruel, while they are eating a full English or a full roast. And the people in this country need more food banks, and they need warm banks. I was watching a thing the other day. I mean, like, you know, the amount, so the amount of people in this country that that are really, really good people that you know are starting, like you know, f you know, you know, we've got youth centres where they've where they've got warm banks in now, and you know, the amount of food, right? What what is being what people are what what people are being issued, you know, for free? It's just like. Uh, it's, you know, it's, you can say it's good to see, but it's not good to see because, you know, we shouldn't, that should not be happening in this country. But, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, the, the people in this country should not be living in poverty, right, because they can't afford their gas, their electric, you know, fuel for their car, you know, or travel costs, you know, or to even pay for food for themselves. You know, you've got people openly talking about, oh, you know, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to stick on an extra jumper and all these type of things. I can't believe that that's what we've come to. But, you know, I always knew we was going to get here. I, you know, that's the thing. I always knew we was going to get here because once you sell off all your shit, that's, that's what happens. In Scotland, there's some serious disorder in Scotland um, on bonfire night. <coughs> but this happened in quite a few towns, towns and cities up and down this, up and down England as well, right? Where, where the police was having running battles, right, with kids up with fireworks and all these type of things. And now, in Scotland, I heard there was like motorbikes and all these things racing about. <laughs> I mean, so you know, but then I think when you when you've got when you've got a country of people who are living in, you know, because I said you know people are living in poverty. Right, because you know the, the the government and previous governments have made the cost of living so high, and you have to wonder why it is here yeah, that these people keep on voting for these people. But I know why. And do I have to say it? Okay, I will. It's because they want to send people who look like me to Rwanda, and you people like that shit, right? And that's why you can have like you know a man. Right, who I described as a terrorist last week, right? and now the police have just come out and said, "Oh yeah, definitely terrorist, definitely a terrorist." Right, you know, go and throw, you know, several petrol bombs, Molotov cocktails, incendiary devices, right, at human beings, some of the most vulnerable in the world. Right, you throw them. Right, you right, and you say, "Well, what happened to him? Where was he radicalized?" They haven't even asked that yet. They haven't said where was he radicalised. They've just said it was a terrorist attack. But say where was he radicalised? You know he's radicalised? He's radicalised in the Daily Mail and places like, you know, and people like Nigel Farage, Katie Hopkins, you know, all people like this. Right? And, you know, the House of Parliament, Suella Braveman, the next day saying, oh, well, there's an invasion. And the invaders come, yeah, you're fuck, you, you, yeah, you always stand there, right, to keep invaders out. Don't you? That's how, that's what, that's how you deal with invaders. Right. Someone invades in your house, right? And you beat them. You beat them with a hammer, right? Or the baseball bat, or anything else, any other implement you can get your hands on. You're going to beat them with, right? They're inside your house. They're in your bedroom in the middle of the fucking night. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You, you're in your boxer shorts, right? They're in a fucking balaclava. You've got a hammer. What are you going to do? Well, good. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got that sorted because you're going to do exactly the same thing that I'm going to do, right? Yeah, precisely. The government are thinking of scrapping the second part of HS2 to save £40 billion. Well, they certainly need to save the money, but 
if they were to do that, I mean, that's just like, just shows Britain up for what it really is, isn't it? It's a country that, like, you know, the, the Victorians were so more advanced than any modern politician that we've got right now. It seems the Victorians was more advanced than any of them. <laughs> I believe then, you know, because I'm sure they just, you know, they they hadn't come out long out of using wooden tools when the Victorians were. Anywho, there was a, there was a bit of a riot a, a riot at a migrant centre, and it um, mattresses was um, was being burnt because I think they they'd run out of um, I think they'd run out of energy for about. 24 hours or something like that. So you know, so the so the migrants got got very annoyed about it. And um, there was a bit of a riot situation, a bit basically a bit of a kerfuffle. So matches were being burnt, and there was there was there, there was inmates that was shown that was seen to be with um, weapons. I don't know what kind of weapons they had in in because it's basically a prison. I don't know what kind of weapons they had in there. Nurses have voted to go on strike. I think that's I think this is probably the first time ever that nurses have actually voted to actually go on strike. It's a really shameful thing, do you know what I mean? It's just, just a really, really shameful thing. You know, we, we, you know Rishi Sunak's that cop, and who gives a shit, but he's there anyway. Because he's only, you know... I, I think, right, that Rishi Sunak going to cop is just stupid now. Because people are going to be like, well, you didn't... You know, you've had to be dragged here, you, you know, screaming and shouting. Right? You know, Boris Johnson has taken himself, like, as if to say, he's some type of world leader, when well, he's a fucking backbench MC. He's a former Prime Minister, but he's a backbench MP. And he should be in his constituency, right? He shouldn't be, you know, he shouldn't be shooting all over the place. I mean, look, um, you know, big forehead Matt, what's his face, yeah? Matt Hancock, Mr. Big Forehead himself, or, the, or, or, right, we could call him the sex pest. No, he's not a sex pest because he, has it, he had his hands all over her backside and it seems like she was enjoying it. So he can't be a sex pest. Right, um, but you know, so you know, but big foreign Matt Hancock gets the whip taken away from him, even though, right, this motherfucker's in the fucking, he's in the jungle, right, and you know, the, he, right, has actually worked out a deal that he can have his phone and his laptop. Can you believe that? <laughs> like he's, he's got access to his phone and his laptop while he's in the motherfucking jungle. Say, so, wow, you see, because you know what, he's good because he works, you know what, he's just like, you know what. If I'm coming, this is this is what I want, right? And you know what? If it was him, you'd just be like, you know what? Yeah, and I want you know my M and M's with all the green ones taken out. But I don't want to see not one green one in the whole in the whole bowl. <laughs> you know, so you know he's really you know, and, and and I think he's I think he's like three or four hundred grand, right? Plus, as I said, his phone and his laptop. That's a great deal that he's worked out because you know there must be a lot of other benefits that he's got. He's probably just said some and right after we're done, I want you to put me up in the best hotel you can find. Right. Five star <laughs> six. Right. Just say that the it's five star, but actually they added another one. Say so six star. <laughs> right. When you wake up in the morning, yeah, you've got some black guy with a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some Brexit. A battery startup, right? British, um, I think they're called British, British Vault, isn't it? But I think it's all Brit, Brit Vault. I think it's called. I think it's all one word. It looks like they're going into administration. Yeah, after they was, you know, they was bigging up Brexit. A big Brexit's going to be brilliant for them. But I don't think these people realise yet. Do you know what? You've got to get some of your parts in from 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 the EU. What, what do you think is going to happen there? You know, you've got import charges. Right? These companies never had this shit before, but now they have. Right? And so this company was bigging it up. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, rush, brilliant. Government's given them a hold for £100 million. And now they went back to the government and said, listen, we need another, you know what, you need to nice us up again, you know, we need a little £300 million. Sorry, sorry, we need a little £3 million. The government's like, nah, nah, I don't think so. And now they get, it looks like they might let their ass go bankrupt. So they might have to call the administrators in. So, you know, but that's you know that that was that company because I can remember a good few months ago when they was talking about you know the, the electric um, batteries that's going to be made in this country. And I was I was thinking to myself, well, yeah, but if we're not attached to the EU, right, and your goods have to come from you, some of your goods are coming from there, right, then you know it's going to be of no benefit 
because you're probably not that pub company is probably going to be losing too much money because you know they've, they've got too much to pay out to, to make these things in the first place it's always been a problem in this country right jacob reese mogg has slammed former bank boss for, former bank of england boss mark carney for claiming that brexit has tanked the pound <coughs> I think Brexit has tanked the pound, and I'm not even you know the former bank manager of the of the Bank of England, but I can clearly see that Brexit has tanked the pound. But you know Nigel, you know people like Nigel Farage and the Rick Jacob Rees Mogg, they'll say, oh no, 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 it hasn't. And what can you say to that? I mean, what can you say to that when you just know they're blatantly lying? What can you say to that? Nothing you can really say to that, right? And Ramonas are being mocked for blaming Brexit for the shortages of labour. So now they're mocking because I'm blaming Brexit for the shortages of labour and I'm being mocked for it. I don't care. <laughs> right? Because you know something, right? I don't care because these people are stupid ass racist twats, xenophobic, bigoted, misogynistic fools. Right? And that's the reason why this country is in the state it's in. Anyway, guys, look, I am 16 minutes over and today is Monday, but it was a weekend just gone in. So, so much news. So don't, you can't blame me for being 16 minutes over, but that's what I am. So I'm going to bow out of here before I'm even longer. So my friends, this is by any means necessary. I'm DMC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.